Hey, welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. A former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Ulumide Akwata, last night clinched the Labour Party ticket for the September 2024 governorship election in Edo State. Akwata scored 316 votes to win the exercise held in Benin City, the Edo State capital, on Friday. The deputy governor of Abia State, Ekechuku Emeta, declared Akwata as the winner of the election. After his emergence, Akwata paid tribute to a former governor of Ondo State and a one-time MBA president, Rutimi Akiridolu, who was buried on the same day. He also thanked his supporters and members of the party for their backing, promising to work for the good of the state if he wins the governorship election. We're now being joined on the morning show by the man himself, Olumide Akwata, the Labour Party candidate for the September 21 Edo State governorship election. Good morning, Mr. Akwata, and congratulations. Good to have you on the morning show today. Good morning. Thank you for having me, and thank you for uh, the good wishes. Absolutely. I'm sure uh, your popular uh, song for the elections will be playing all over your head now, the Oludi, Oludi song. You know, again, congratulations. Uh, but let's talk serious business. You have won. Indeed, who, who's your guy? <laughs> All right, so a victory for the first leg has come. Um, did you see this coming, given uh, the tortuous um, um, things that led to the, to the primaries within the Labour Party? You know, all the insinuations, all the back and forth, you know, all the threats here and there. How did we get to this point that eventually Olumide Akwata is now the candidate? for the Labour Party. Oh, thank you. Um, did I see it coming? Yes, I did. This is what we worked for. This is what we planned for. It is the, exactly the same, the, it is the exact outcome that we, um, we anticipated. But what we recognized very quickly was that there, there were many obstacles in our, on our path. And for us, it was, it was, it was important to dislodge uh, these obstacles was important to dislodge uh, these uh, impediments to success. So, um, how did we get here? We we recognized very quickly that we had to work and go to the people with our message, and this is what we did. I went around uh, Labour Party in all 18 local governments of Edo State three times, three times. And uh, if you know the nature of our roads in Edo, you know that this is no mean feat. And I went three times to the people and I sold my message to them and they bought it. Uh, because uh, the people want, don't really want too much. They just want to know that you, uh, you, they are important, you are important, or, sorry, they are important to you and that you are looking out for them. And, 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 and I think I inspired that confidence in the people. The next thing that we had to do was to ensure that once we had the people on our side, we was to ensure that the will of the people prevailed. Uh, one major problem in Nigerian politics today, in fact, I think the major problem is that politicians have, politicians have, have perfected uh, the art of subverting the will of the people. And that is what you find. Uh, there's such a dissonance, there's such a, uh, there's such a, how do I put it, such a, it's, it's night and day, the will, what the people want and what actually manifests is night and day. So it was clear to us, my team and I, that on this one, we had to make sure that the will of the people actually prevailed. We had sold ourselves to the people, they had bought it. But they were very, the people were very, very, um, very anxious. And, the, and, and this message was repeated to us all over the state. You are the one we want, but can it, will it happen? Can it happen? Can you ensure that it happens? And, and this is what we, we pursued that. And what you saw yesterday, uh, let me put it in context. There were 346 or 343 votes, I think on offer, and we garnered 316. Uh, and, and so for me, that is clearly, uh, uh, clearly a landslide, clearly uh, it's an, it was an overwhelming victory. And it was not really my victory. It was victory for the people, the members of the Labour Party in Edo State. For the first time in a very long time, the, what they wanted was actually what obtained yesterday. 
Congratulations uh, once again, Mr. Akwata. But there have been insinuations of your candidacy being influenced by external forces, particularly because of the Julius Abure impact. Now, how do you intend to address these speculations and assure party members and the electorate of your independence and the commitment to Labour Party's ideals? And also, given the subsisting internal disputes and challenges faced during the primary elections, what immediate actions do you plan to take to unify the party and rally support behind your candidacy for the upcoming governorship election? Thank you. Um, well, the, the dummy that was sold in the course of, uh, of, of us campaigning for the, uh, for the ticket of the party, the dummy that was sold was always that um, I am a, I was a I was a, a stooge or an agent of Governor Baseki, and, I, and, I, and I, like I have mentioned quite a number of times, um, even on your program, uh, that was necessary. It was a necessary tool in the hands of uh, of these persons, so that I could be disparaged because not many people in this part are happy with Governor Baseki and his performance. So it was very it was necessary to label me as Governor Baseki's agent, so that the people. Uh, the members of the party would very quickly run away from me. I am not his agent. I am not under any external influences. I am my own man, and I ran a campaign uh, that the people saw as genuine and honest and well-meaning. And so I, and I, I am looking forward to slugging it out with uh, the other candidates that have emerged in both parties. Governor Obasek, Obaseki's PDP party have all come up with a uh, it's looking like two candidates at the moment, but uh, when they finally res resolve and we know who the candidate is, I think when we go to the field, it will become even clearer to the people that and, and those who are making these insinuations that I am under no external influence whatsoever. I am doing this because I think we must bring the Nigerian people back to the center stage, back to the heart of Nigerian politics. Governance must be conducted for their benefit and not for anything else. Uh, what do I intend to do with regard to the problems in the in the Labour Party? Well, um, I have faith in the internal um, me um, mechanisms that exist in the party that we will resolve our differences. Uh, um, I, for one, will be calling on all of my co-aspirants, all of those who ran along with me for this ticket and who were unsuccessful yesterday to come on board and work with me to ensure that we achieve a, a victory and success at the September polls. And so I already started reaching out to them and making calls, and I'm sure we'll be meeting, to, meeting at some point. Uh, I will also be reaching out to the party leadership uh, um, and to ensure that uh, we're all on the same page. It's going to be a really hard fight in September, or at least the days leading up to September. It's going to be a, a really hard fight. and so. It will be better for us to be together. It will be better for us to, sing, to be singing from the same hymn sheet as the Labour Party. Uh, once, we, once we allow all of these uh, issues to affect or distract us, then we begin to uh, make it impossible for us to achieve victory. So I will play my part in this regard. Thank you very much, sir, and congratulations on winning your primary. Now, going beyond the internal issues within the Labour Party, I want to speak more about the gubernatorial elections you're going to face, because one of the topics that has come up over and over is the fact that the people of Edo Central believe that it might be their turn to vie for the governor's seat. Now, do you believe that the equitable representation of diverse regions is crucial? And do you perceive it as unjust for another man from the or another individual from the Bini ethnic group to vie from and assume the position of governor? Now, this is beyond considerations of capabilities, um, but more so focusing on potentially depriving the people of Edo Central of fair representation. Well, I've spoken to this issue a number of times, and as you as you asked your question, my mind I cast my mind to the uh, video I watched recently of uh, His Excellency Governor Shomale, one time Governor of Edo State, and he spoke to the issues, and uh, I was I was really gratified by the comments he made. 
Um, well, firstly, let me speak from the point of view of the Labour Party. Uh, I believe in uh, affirmative action. I believe in uh, equity. I believe in balance. Uh, however, there are some cold uh, calculations you must make in politics. Um, the, the, the way this game was defined, or the way it was designed, I'm sorry, is, is that the majority would always would hold sway. Uh, and that's the way it works. And for the majority to be asked to give up uh, uh, control, there must be engagement. There must be consensus building. Uh, I am a Bini man. I come from the South, Edo South uh, Senatorial District. And yes, it is correct that the present occupant of government house in Benin is also an Edo man, albeit in another political party. The Labour Party is running as uh, fielding a candidate for the first time in a very long time. And um, this could very well be seen as our first serious uh, uh, effort in this regard. There is no way we can come to the table with zoning as our first, as our calling card. We must firstly look and uh, see uh, that we have a... Uh, can you hear me? Just yes, want to be sir. sure you hear me. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Just want to be sure. So we can't come to the table if indeed winning is our objective. There are certain sentiments we must set aside and look towards winning. Now, um, we just, we, we're, we're new to the party, or should I say new to the game, as, and I'm referring now to the Labour Party. We, are, we approach the issue from uh, pragmatic, uh, consider, with pragmatic considerations. How can we win this election? It is the fact that the present occupant is, from, is a Benin man. Yes, he belongs to another party. Labour Party has just shown up. We will wipe this slate clean, come with the best candidate, with the one with the capacity to win, and capacity to deliver good governance. When we have done that, then as a party that has performed well in office, we can begin to engage with the majority, the Bini speaking people, who have the numbers, who are the resource base of the state, who, uh, who, well, the, who, uh, who really are in the, in the driver's seat, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, if I may put it that way. We would have to engage with them, having performed as a labor government, and let them understand that a Labour governor from any part of the state will do as well. It is when you have engaged with them at that level, and it is not a two-month, three-month exercise. It is something that Labour Party will do when we win the elections in September. We will sit down with the, uh, with the stakeholders and say, listen, we have a policy of zoning. We believe in equity. We believe in uh, justice. We believe in fair play. So now that a Bini man is on the ticket and has become governor, Next, next time round, we would like this to move to another zone. But we promise you that moving this to another zone will not by any means reduce the um, quality of governance that we would have by that time displayed to the people of Edo State. Uh, you know, just, you know, I see that most of our, our politicians play lip, uh, pay lip service to the issue of zoning. It's a convenient excuse and convenient argument when it's time for elections. But after elections, what do they do about it? You must demonstrate to the people, those who are the majority, that if they let go, they will not be worse off. It is, an, it is, it is a reality. You must do that. There are states in Nigeria today who, where the majority dominant tribe hold on to government, hold on to uh, the governorship seat in, in perpetuity. Edo State is not like that. Our people are, under, are discerning, uh, they're democratic in, in, in leaning and disposition. And I'm, I'm sure that the Labour Party will be able to convince them, assure them that, that I'm referring now to the Beninese, that if, the, if power moves uh, to another zone, they will, not be, they will not be worse off. As Governor Oshomeli said in the interview that I refer to now, he, a man from an Esakom man, was able to win governorship in Edo State, not because there was zoning, but because he was able to sell his, his policies and his uh, programs to the Bini people. And that is what any well-meaning politician needs to do, and not to hide under the excuse of zoning and then sell to the people uh, options that really don't move the needle. All right, Mr. Kwata. Uh, two questions. First, uh, to you know, take off from where you just landed, are you sure that uh, your position on the fact that zoning does not matter will resonate uh, with voters in Nedo State outside of Benin? That's one. And then number two will be, uh, now that we are going into election proper or into the campaigns proper towards the elections in September, what do you think will stand you out 
as the best candidate. Now that we know who your uh, key uh, uh, contestants will be in PDP and in APC, even though, like you said, we have two people you know, in PDP who are claiming to be the, uh, the candidate. But of course, we know that um, Mr. Asui, Asui Godalo is probably the preferred candidate of the sitting governor. And of course, the deputy, uh, sitting deputy governor, Philip Shaibu, you know, is also there claiming to be the candidate. In APC, we have Monday Okwebolo. Um, these are people that, to an extent, uh, they, they have had some stake in governance. You have been president of the Nigerian Bar Association. What will be the key thing that you think that the Edo voters will see in you that will give you an edge over all these other gentlemen, who, by the way, are far older than you, because I believe that out of the three parties, in terms of candidacy, you are by far the youngest. Okay, firstly, I did not say that zoning does not matter. So let's get that clear. What I have said is that we will need to negotiate and engage the people, the dominant tribe, we will need to engage them on the issue of zoning. Yes. And so there are some cold hard calculations that must be made uh, with regard to zoning, first and foremost. As a party, we have to make some decisions regarding how we can win the election. Uh, when I say cold hard calculations, the people, the, the Edo Central, the people, the ASAM people, uh, what, 15, 16% of the population of Edo State, as a party just coming to, the, to, this, uh, to this contest, we, would, we cannot play the card of that zoning card at this time. Because firstly, we have not demonstrated uh, capacity in government house. We will have to go into government house firstly. And we would have to um, uh, assuage uh, the, uh, uh, or at least engage with those who are the dominant group in the state at the moment. Uh, you see, our fortunes or our circumstances are not the same as PDP. PDP have a different conversation that they will have to have with uh, the ASA people because uh, this is a different conversation totally. You don't transplant zoning, so you can't hold me to whatever uh, PDP and APC have done. You can't hold Labour Party to that. We have a different conversation to be had with the Edo people. Give us a chance. We are wiping. We are not coming with the zoning card at this point in time because we are new to this contest. We are bringing our best foot forward at this point. And they have decided, my party has decided that I am that person who can win an election for the party. And thereafter, the conversation on zoning can be had. It is important, it's critical. But uh, uh, ti like we say, timing, timing is everything in life. You know, and the time is not right at this time, or for, at this moment, for Labour Party to even begin to talk about zoning. So I think that should put an end uh, to that co uh, argument about zoning. And, and, and the Labour Party has demonstrated this very clearly and resoundingly from, uh, with the outcome of our primaries yesterday. Uh, with, regard to, with regard to your second question as to what do I... First and foremost, I don't know, we, we, need, we, we need to go check to see uh, uh, the date of birth of uh, Senator Okbawolo before we decide <laughs> that I'm the youngest person. Maybe you have, I haven't. But definitely, uh, Aswe Godalo is my elder brother. Uh, um, we both attended King's College, but the thing is, he was out of the gate long before I even got into KC. So uh, there's no doubt about the fact that he's my elder brother and uh, one, I hold him in the highest of esteem. And, and uh, we're not just, he's not just my elder brother, he's my friend. However, what do I bring to the table that is different? Uh, first and foremost, uh, the people of Edo State can't wait to see Governor Baseki leave Government House. That much is clear. They, they, they are. They're fed up, they're upset, they're unhappy with him and, his, and with his performance in a, in a dual state. Uh, and so the, I mentioned uh, a while ago, I, I referred to him as a helicopter governor. And what I meant by that was that his policies are so far removed from the realities on the ground and his programs, the people do not think that this, they, have been, they have been well served by the government. What I did not mention at that interview is that in that helicopter there are many other occupants and Aswe Godalo is one of those occupants. Aswe Godalo has been a member of this Edo state government in the first iteration under uh, Adam Soshomole, he was a member of the economic management team and now he is chief economic advisor to Governor Baseki. So uh, there's really nothing different. Anybody who votes for Aswe Godalo is, is voting for Godwin Obaseki to return to government house. So it's a referendum really on Godwin Obaseki. 
The people will decide when we get to September whether or not they want God in Obaseke to remain. Because if, he, if, if Aswe Godalo comes to government house, you just have God in Obaseke, a continuation of God in Obaseke. What do I bring that is different? You say that they are older politicians or they are, they've been at the game longer than I have been. I think that is precisely the problem. They have been there for so long, they have forgotten exactly what the point really is, what this is all about. They have forgotten that it's about the people. They have forgotten that policies and priorities must be organized in such a way that it is the people that are important. They have forgotten that and maybe they've stayed there for too long. So maybe they need to get out of the way and let those who are, those who are in touch with the people, in touch with current realities, will go, can go in there to make a difference. That is the difference that I intend to make. Um, I hope I don't sound too cliched, but it is about the people. And uh, that is why I went to the Labour Party. I joined a party that is people-centric. You look at our logo, you see that that is our essence. Uh, the family unit, Papa, Mama, Pekin. So you, you see where we are as a country today. We are at the brink. Uh, I, I watched with my heart in my mouth the videos of uh, people uh, attacking a truck full of yams. You know, uh, just, just, just to put food on the table is, a, is, a, is, a, is, an, is an almost existential problem in Nigeria right now. Our people can't feed, our people can't eat. Government policies are unfriendly to the people. They are people, not people friendly. I intend to, with my party, run a government that takes, puts the people right at the center. Uh, I don't think I have enough time to go into all of that, but I, I, just, I just hope and, uh, that you understand that that is the difference that we intend to bring as Labour Party, uh, bring the people back to the centre. PDP, APC uh, have totally forgotten about the people. They've forgotten that it's the people who sent them there. And uh, they need to come back home and, uh, and let somebody else, another party, another group of people uh, uh, get, to, get onto the driver's seat. Like you've uh, rightfully said, the governance is about the people. And governance in Edo State, of course, comes with its own set of unique challenges. Are there specific programs or policies that you intend uh, to implement uh, to address issues? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. If, if you can't hear me, I was talking about uh, your plan to, uh, how you intend to, what's, rather, excuse me, what specific programs and policies that you intend to implement to address issues, you know, such as infrastructure development, health care, education, even job creation. And what message do you have for the people of Edo State as you embark on this journey to lead the state? What assurances can you provide regarding your commitment to serving their interests and advancing the collective welfare of all <coughs> citizens, as you've rightly, uh, rightfully mentioned? I'm a lawyer. I've been one for 30 years, and I and I, I have faith in the in the institutions, in the justice uh, sector, uh, um, in our system. Uh, what we have is an individual who currently is chairman of the party, who is who is against whom certain allegations have been made. Uh, um, uh, there's, there are those that border on financial impropriety. There are those that are actually down uh, criminal. Uh, in terms of uh, attempted murder and stuff like that. Uh, what I believe is that we should allow the system play out and not make insinuations and tower the entire Labour Party with, with one brush and say because the chairman of the party has his legal troubles, then the uh, uh, Labour Party is, is, uh, is, is the same thing as all the other parties. Uh, Julius Abure is not, does not equate to Labour Party. He has his own issues. Uh, and, and I think you, I think if you if you if you remember that the the, the whistleblower was also is also a member of the NWC of the Labour Party, Mrs. Ms. Opara, that tells you that the that I think that that speaks to uh, a different kind of party. That one member of the NWC was bold enough to come out to make to to make these allegations, and they remain allegations, by the way. Uh, I think that tells you that Labour Party remains different. Labour Party stands apart, and I, I, and I don't see how any of this would affect my candidacy. The party is strong enough to, with, uh, to deal with all of these issues if, the, if indeed the allegations put forth by the treasurer are found to be true. I understand that she's gone to court. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Abure is uh, able to defend himself. Our national chairman is able to defend himself against all of these allegations. Uh, the, 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 the one about attempted murder, 
uh, came out of a petition written by a guy who was uh, used to be national youth leader of the party. Uh, Mr. Aburi will, will, will have his day in court and the issues will be resolved uh, by the Judex. Uh, that has nothing to do with the Labour Party and our bid to, uh, to win the governorship in Edo State this year. So I'm confident, I'm really confident, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm psyched, uh, totally, totally so, uh, that we will definitely win the elections come September and, uh, and Labour Party will move into Osadebe Avenue. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you yes. very much. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on the morning show today. And good luck in the elections.